Speedway Report is produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for Racers Reunion Radio. Well, Team Penske claims another title, and I am really proud of this series. I'll tell you why. Rules in fractions finally get a DNQ in Cup, and it is about time. And the Italian horses... Prancing horses, the galloping horses, they're looking pretty fast. Well, we've got all this and more coming up. Welcome to Speedway Report. It is Monday, September 23rd, 2019. I am live from the shores of Lake Norman in Race City, USA, Mooresville, North Carolina. Patrick Reynolds coming at you. Thank you for joining the fastest half hour in racing. Have you subscribed to our YouTube channel yet? No? Hop on that. If you're watching a podcast, please pause us or open up a new tab. Go right over to YouTube and subscribe. And if you're listening live, you can do it at the same time. We have the YouTube channel. Please uh, give us a subscription. You ever need us, we'll be deposited right into your mailbox because I know some of you can't always be here on Monday. But it's cool, 730 on the East Coast, 430 on the West Coast. Our friends out in California, they are hunkered down in the cubicle riding out the last 30 minutes of their work day till 5 o'clock right here with us at Speedway Report. Thanks for all of you West Coasters that join us each week live. We're going to jump over to the Victory Lane lap, tell you who won what over a pretty busy fall weekend. NASCAR's Monster Energy Cup Series went 400 laps Saturday night in Richmond, Virginia. Martin Truex Jr. goes two for two in Cup Series playoffs. Xfinity raced on Saturday or Friday night. And I'll correct that Christopher Bell raced Friday night in Richmond, Virginia, because there was him and everybody else in this race uh, up at Richmond. C. Bell takes the win in the Xfinity race on Friday night. NASCAR's Whalen Modified Tour ran one of their biggest races of the year, if not the biggest. Up at Loud, New Hampshire with the Musket 250, Bobby Santos the third in a substitute role with Dave Sapienza's car wound up in victory lane. As usual, an outstanding finish shootout with Doug Kobe. Uh, they were side-by-side side on the backstretch. Uh, great run, three wide for second place. Santos parks it in victory lane. NASCAR's Kids and Nephews Pro Series Tour. Uh, East was up at Loudon as well. They won by Ty Gibbs, that event. Go figure. There you go. Uh, kids and grandkids and nephew, even with Ty Gibbs winning the race. In IndyCar, out on the West Coast, Laguna Seca, California, in Monterey, one of the most picturesque tracks, certainly in the United States, possibly the world. Gorgeous facility was won by Colton Herta yesterday afternoon. Joseph Newgarden is the series champion for the second time in his career. Formula One's original night race was held in Singapore, and a great twist and turn of the Formula One power and a shifting of the scales. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Sebastian Vettel's Ferrari winds up in victory lane. That's three straight wins for the horses. Over on the dirt, the Lucas Oil Late Models were in Indiana for the past weekend on Friday night in Kokomo. Their main event was taken by Tyler Erb Jr. in the big race of the weekend, the Jackson 100 in Brownstown, Indiana, won by second-generation star Hudson O'Neill. Now, their cousins, the World of Outlaw Late Models, were up in the Northeast on Thursday night at State Line Speedway in Pennsylvania. A race was won by Max Blair. Friday night in Dundee, New York, Shane Clanton won your feature. And on Saturday in Sealands Grove Speedway in Pennsylvania, was won by Daryl Lanigan. World of Outlaw Sprints graced the Midwest with their presence with at Dodge City, Kansas, a doubleheader Friday and Saturday nights. Donnie Schatz was your winner on Friday. Brad Sweet taking home the bacon on Saturday's A Main. Bummer that USAC's Silver Crown tried to get their event in at Springfield, Illinois. This was rained out again. Doesn't look like there's any place on the schedule to put it. Originally scheduled for earlier during the fair, rained out. They found this date not working too well, which is a shame because I love me some Silver Crown on the mile. In one of the biggest dirt races in the Northeast this year, 
It was the Freedom 76 at Grandview, Pennsylvania on Saturday night. This year's 76er taken by Mike Goular and a very nice $25,000 for the win for the small block mods in Pennsylvania. First thing before we want to get going, uh, John McKennedy's father passed away over the weekend. We want to, want to send our thoughts and prayers out to him. Uh, McKennedy was driving Tommy Baldwin's number seven New York car and wound up in second place at the Musket 250 at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Uh, great shootout, great run, uh, taking Baldwin's car to second place. Santos, your winner, Doug Kobe in third, so they had a very talented podium. McKennedy right in the middle with Baldwin's machine, and his dad, such a big supporter of his racing career, as most dads are, uh, passed away uh, recently between the checkered flag then and our show now. So, John McKennedy, our thoughts are with you, my friend. Sorry to s hear about this. As the Northeast Modified family uh, gets hit again, with the loss of Mike Stefanik and Bob Potter last week. And John McKennedy's dad leaves us too soon. So deep thoughts and prayers continue to go out to the modified faithful up in the Northeast. Let's talk about some positive news here. We've had some, uh, you know, some deaths with our modified family here. But some family, some friends of mine, and some good people around here did a wonderful thing on Sunday afternoon. I'm talking about Joseph Newgarden's championship with Team Penske in the IndyCar Series as the Checkers flew over uh, on Laguna Seca on the road course. Now, Colton Hurdle wound up in victory lane, dominating performance. Kid drove a great race, but that's such a bummer that now we're done. IndyCar season's done until March uh, at St. Petersburg. That just seems like a long, long, long way off because it is. However, let's talk about Newgarden and his title. Uh I was watching this race, and I, I I was digging it. I was feeling something special was happening here. Uh, New Garden, a great guy from Tennessee. This is the kind of uh, person that uh, could have been a dirt racer, could have been you know NASCAR path, but he comes out of Tennessee, and he's an IndyCar star with his second career championship. These are the type of folks that IndyCar should put such a big push on with the misconception of too many foreigners or complain about, you know, where's the Americans? Well, you got one. You've got a two-time title winner in Joseph Newgarden. And the racing is good in the series. And what I felt really was special about this event, this day, this race, with that championship tension in the air, was I was watching a legitimate championship. Now, I'll reflect this and mirror it to, all the, to NASCAR's punchline that I've seen for so many years now, uh, since 2004. And how I just can't get into it, can't enjoy it. I drive, get driven further and further away. IndyCar has held strong to their roots, and God bless them. They crowned a legitimate champion on Sunday with Joseph Newgarden. Now, he, granted, he drove for Team Penske, which is a powerhouse. You've got you know pretty much Penske, Ganassi, and Andretti. I guess Schmidt Peterson too, but they're like a step behind the, the big three there. Penske is certainly a favorite for the title every single year, but I love the point system. Still a major league automobile series here in America. We start counting at the first race of the season. We stop counting at the last race of the season. Driver with the most points is the champion. Simple, effective, and real. Without playoffs, stages, playoff points, final four, I don't get it. I don't care. Bravo, IndyCar. You did a wonderful thing here. Now, a good friend of mine, Will Schneider, uh, works on uh, New Garden's team. He's been an employee with Penske for a while now. And I want to chronicle his efforts a little bit through the years. Is uh, He's been moved to different cars through the teams. So he's got a championship, uh, but he his timing has been bad for the Indianapolis 500. He worked on Will Powers' car, uh, then got moved to Simon Pagenaud's car. So the, the year he got moved off of Will Powers' car, Will Power won the Indy 500. Will Schneider then got moved off of Simon Pagenaud's car to Joseph Newgarden's car. Now, that was the year that this year that Pagenaud won the Indianapolis 500. So my buddy Will Schneider is kind of 0 for 2. So if the pattern continues, Put the bank, bet the mortgage that Joseph Newgarden 
will win the Indianapolis 500 in 2020. That's been the pattern. I hope Will Schneider, my friend, can stay with him and uh, reap the rewards of that. But Will, hats off to you. Big tip of the hat. Nice job right here. Uh, Mooresville, North Carolina guy working at Penske. Got an IndyCar championship for him yesterday. Great part about Will's story. Uh, met him at church. Uh, talked to him there. Has gotten to know him a while over the years. He's an amputee and his leg. Uh, one of his legs from the knee down. He's got a prosthetic, and he is still working on the cars. He's still a mechanic, have been for years. He f was formerly an over-the-wall pit crew guy. I'd love to see him go back to do it. He's been practicing. He's been talking about it, but it would be pretty cool to have a over-the-wall pit crew tire changer guy who uh, wore a prosthetic from the knee down. That would be a fantastic story. So Will Schneider, Team Penske, God bless you, my man. Good job. Uh, good for you to take the checkered flag, uh, the championship. You got a title uh, under your belt now. I don't know if you already had one. I, I'm thinking about your resume. I'm talking right here, and I'm thinking in my head, gosh, did Will, has Will been with anybody that's won the title yet? And I wasn't sure how the, the timing of all that lined up. But I know he's, co he's come a year short. Uh, a twice of winning the Indianapolis 500, getting that ring. But he's got himself a championship now, which is such, such a big deal. Let's see uh, what 2020 holds for him in the Indianapolis 500. <laughs> now, as much as I enjoy uh, New Garden's championship with IndyCar racing, I just, I chuckle and laugh at NASCAR's playoffs. It's a punchline to me. It's a joke. I get these email. I'm on NASCAR's uh, email press release list. So I get all the information about qualifying, about practice, midweek stories, what's going on on the track. And these, uh, you know, the subject is email like anything else. There's a subject line. It tells you what we're, we're talking about here. And for the most part, all of them that say playoffs, I don't even read. I, I, I don't know. I don't care. I don't get it. I, you know, I just like playoffs. Come on. I, I'm watching a legitimate title for the IndyCar ride. This playoff stuff, I don't, you know, stage points. Ah, blah. I don't know. I don't care. I, I'm laughing. I literally laugh out loud. <laughs> I, I, I find it hard to follow. I, I don't care. It's like, God, you have destroyed the sport, guys. So mad. Please turn it back. Please fix it back to a better sport and a legitimate title makes me a bigger and bigger fan of IndyCar racing all the time. I, I just can't do it. Now, I'm going to I bash cup all the time. Let's give them some love. Let's, let's take the Monster Energy Cup Series and give them some love. Now, I like Eric Jones just fine, so I don't wish him any harm. However, it is good to have a car not pass tech inspection and have them disqualified. That's fine. That's how it should have been. My question is, what the hell took so long? Why have we been jerking around for this for decades? We take away points. We take away money. It doesn't work. If the car does not pass post-race tech, bingo. They get, uh, they get disqualified. Now, uh, Eric Jones kind of broke up. This Gibbs still had a great run. Joe Gibbs Racing finished 1, 2, 3, 4 with Jones in the fourth spot. So even with his disqualification, they took the podium with the top three, which is fantastic. And it was the rear toe on the car that uh, caused them to not pass tech and be tossed out for the evening. This is a big deal. We used to push this to the max all the time uh, when I was working on teams with the rear end alignment, uh, both the toe and the skew of the rear end. There was uh, measurements of this body and what kind of angles and all that. They got systems now is I've been removed from a NASCAR shop for 11 years. So things have changed dramatically, exponentially, since I've been a hands-on guy with these teams. Uh, so how they measure them, I've seen it. I just don't have experience with a hands-on, with the laser, laser measurements and the, uh, the system that they have. And there's not there's leeway, there's grace, and then there's a go, no-go. <laughs> trying to win the race is what they are. Uh, you you build so much offset and skew in the rear end and the toe, uh, be, depending on how much time you spend in the corner. When you get a uh, rear end line perfectly in the car and then you try to go through the corner, uh, you're fighting the rear end. It's a straight line and it wants to go straight and you're trying to make it turn. But if you can cheat it up a little bit, make it turn a little bit more on the straightaway, you're that much for ahead when you get to the corner. Now you get too much on the straightaway and you'll introduce scrub 
into the equation, which will slow you down. So it's a very fine line. But like everything, NASCAR has the rules. NASCAR has their uh, limit that you can go. And the guys at Eric Jones just crossed that line. Now, my point is, I like Jones just fine. Gibbs just fine. No problem there. However, when people are don't pass tech post-race, they should be disqualified. Gone. Bye. We should have been doing this long ago. It's kind of like double file restarts. We should have done this a whole heck of a lot sooner than what we actually did. I don't know why we didn't. Um, but this is good. Uh, have a guy not pass tech disqualified. Eric Jones, big fan. Saw him run late models, uh, go that far back with him. <clears throat> and he's a good dude. Uh, but just don't wish him harm. Don't wish him bad. But NASCAR, your playoffs suck. But the fact that you're disqualifying guys that don't pass tech is really good. So I'll give you some love there. Uh, speaking of NASCAR, we'll take from NASCAR Cup. We'll jump to the Modifieds. Is there a better ticket in all of auto racing? Or should I say this? Is there a more consistently good ticket in all of auto racing than Modifieds on the New Hampshire Mile? You know every time you are going to get a very, very good race. Great race, exceptional race. That track was almost, it, it, that's magic. The nickname for the track is the Magic Mile. With modifieds, it is absolute magic. If you've never seen a modified race at New Hampshire, that is the race to go to as far as quality of racing, of passing, of excitement. There's nothing better. Now, I've heard some debate if to, uh, the 250 laps on the mile uh, was too long. I'm a fan of it. I like long races. I didn't mind 500 miles at Dover. I thought it was just fine. Granted, it was a five-hour race, but I'm fine with that. I enjoyed it. I like the marathon runs. So we've got this 250 on the mile at New Hampshire. I love it. I, I think it's a good deal. I wasn't there. I was down here in the south. However, uh, I'm a fan of those races. I miss the, so many extra distance races that they used to run. Uh, it's the, the circuit now is littered with, littered with 150s. There's a few 200s. I think the Sizzler and one at Riverhead. But, you know, we used to run the 200s and 250s and 300s and so many long-distance races for the Modifieds when I grew up. And I miss all those races. And this is at least an attempt to, to bring back some magic, of bringing that uh, uh, excitement, that this long-distance thing. I like that. I like that. Let's throw in some pit strategy. Let's refuel. Let's change tires. Come on. Let's get rid of any mandatory breaks. I might as well throw that in there, too. Uh, let's let them run the 250s straight through and see what happens. You get a caution, you get a caution. I kind of like that. I miss the old Thompson 300. It's not around anymore. The Race of Champions, Bud 200, we can go on and on and on. None of them are here anymore. But the Musket 250 at New Hampshire is alive. It is well, and I hope it goes on for many years into the future. But I'm, I'm into the 250. If you want to see the race, uh, it was on Fans Choice TV live, free, I might add. And I believe this week, looking on the calendar, I think it's the 26th this week, Thursday, M uh, NBC SN should have a rebroadcast or their initial broadcast of the Musket 250. So if you want to see a good race, I'll tell you, go watch the modified race at New Hampshire. None better. And no matter what, you may you could get a buy a ticket to the, like the Cup Series, we'll say, at any track you want. You may get a very good race. You may get a dud. I don't know. Martinsville is pretty consistent that it produces good Cup racing, but in most of the cases, you may get a good one. You may get a dud. Modifieds at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway Mile, always a good race. You're guaranteed your ticket money. You're gonna buy a ticket, sit in the grandstands. You're gonna see a fantastic race in it. It happened again. I heard it was exceptional. I heard it was brilliant. Finish was good. Racing was good. Always, always, always good. Modifieds at the mile are never, ever, ever a bad thing. And one more observation before I get out of here tonight. Who's feeding the Ferraris over in Italy? Where's the hay coming from? The Cheerios factory? Vettel and Leclerc are flexing some muscle and give Mercedes some game. Did we notice there was not a Mercedes car on the podium on Sunday in Singapore? I'd have to research to find out when the last time that was, that a Mercedes of some sort was not on a podium. It's been a while, quite a while. Um, but Le Leclerc, 
won two races, and Vettel wins now. They've stood atop the podium for three races in a row. That's something special. And Leclerc even had the pole uh, on Saturday. So we've got two wins and a pole. He's got some big momentum behind him. And Ferrari, I don't know if they're doing anything different, or Mercedes maybe just lost a step. But that is, don't give that championship to Hamilton yet. There's a lot of action coming up. Uh, Leclerc is closer to the top than Vettel is. This could be a very interesting world championship finish. Is they're heading to, where are they going? Russia this week. Uh, it's, this stuff is getting is worthwhile setting your alarm for and getting up and watching it as the season goes along. And again, another legitimate championship without playoffs or a Final Four. I want to pay respect to Dave Despain and Motor Week Illustrated on Saturday afternoons on TBS. There were a lot of good candidates for Racer of the Week this week. You win the Freedom 76 from Mike Goulart, that's a big deal. You win the Modified Race on the Mile, that's a big deal. Um, but it comes down to me, any race win, not quite as big as a championship win. I'm going to give the Racer of the Week to Tennessee's own Joseph Newgarden for his second IndyCar championship and with Team Penske. And we'll see if his Indy 500 timing works out for Mooresville resident and friend of mine, Will Schneider, to see if he can get an Indy 500 wing in 2020. Guys, in between our broadcasts, keep up on the world of auto racing with SpeedwayReport.com. We've got our archived shows. We've got articles to read. Rhonda Beck is on the job. She's looking. She's talking. She's interviewing. She's got more stuff coming up. So please check back with SpeedwayReport.com on social media. Where can you find me? All over the place. Hit me up on Facebook. Uh, on the We've got Racers Reunion. You can like that page. We've got Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds. Twitter, you can hit me up at Speedway Report or at Speedway Pat. I'm on Instagram at Speedway Pat. RacersReunion.com, our shows are in the forum. I'm also on LinkedIn. Is like I said at the top of the show, subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs> Thanks to everyone on the Facebook Live feed for joining the conversation during the show tonight. I will check back with you guys here shortly. And go see a race at a track near you. We're in mid-September, getting into late September. We're going to be inside and complaining there's no racing, so please catch your local short track this weekend. I want to thank all of the military past and present for the freedoms we enjoy as Americans in our daily life, including the simple things like bench racing right here on a Monday night. Freedom is not free, and a veteran paid that bill for us. To all of the men and women who are defending freedom and watching Speedway Report, take care of yourselves and come home soon. A special salute to the teachers, school staff, firefighters, police officers, and paramedics in our own communities. They are quiet and modest heroes every single day. God bless and thank you. You have been watching Speedway Report from the shores of Lake Norman in Race City, USA, Mooresville, North Carolina. Please like our Facebook page, Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds, and you can follow me on Twitter at Speedway Pat. Now, if you are on Facebook right now live, head on over to the Drag Racing List page because Drag List Live is coming up next at the top of the hour in just a few minutes. Bill, John, and Barb got you covered in the straight line formation. We'll be back live here on Facebook next week, Monday, September 30th. We will look at the Four Crown Nationals at Eldora, Charlotte's Roval Weekend, the NHRA at Gateway, and a whole bunch of short track racing. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next week.